Nobody likes to point fingers at American farmers. Agriculture's had a real wide berth in America for a lot of years, but things have changed. Nor has it ever been popular to single out excessive fertilizer use as the main cause for Lake Erie's algal woes. But today's agricultural practices leave little doubt and few choices for the farmer. The strength of fertilizers, the application rates, uh, the, the need to, to turn crops over faster or more crops in a year, all require real aggressive positions for, for farmers. This is Quasar Energy's founder and president, Mel Kurtz. And the result sometimes is a compromise in, in the environment. Mel comes from a long line of Kurtzes who know a thing or two about keeping soil fertile. For years, the family operated the Akron compost facility, and the responsibility was to take all of their sewage sludge solids and convert them to compost. So he understands all too well the nexus between food production and lake health. People call it nutrient management. Most of us call it nutrient mismanagement. Phosphorus and nitrogen are what feed the algae in these lakes. So you add sun to the plant life that's already in the lakes or streams with nutrient-rich phosphorus and nitrogen, voila, we have lakes you can't use. We have lakes with toxic algae that kill animals, fish, and, and are harmful to humans. But for him, fertilizer and stormwater management are surface problems. At the root of it all is the lack of alternatives for those actually getting their hands dirty. If you tell a farmer you can't use phosphorus because it's going to be runoff and you have no proposed alternative, what's he do? Okay, so he stops growing his crops and we stop eating. That doesn't work so well. Behind Mel is his alternative. A solution not only for farmers and cleaning up Lake Erie, but an answer for sustainable energy and controlling greenhouse gas emissions. It's called an anaerobic biodigester. It's like a cow's stomach. This is Quasar's plant operator, James Robinson. James alone runs the bioenergy plant here in East Cleveland. We take in organic waste and we run it through a process of anaerobic digestion to create methane gas. And the methane gas is then used to create electricity and also power vehicles. Up to 250 homes get their electricity from the methane created by bacteria as it devours all the waste that we'd normally shove down a trash compactor, flush away, or dump in a landfill. It could be byproducts from food manufacturing, could be manure from farms, it could be fat soils and grease, sewage sludge, municipal uh, waste streams, could be from baseball parks, football stadiums. In fact, this tanker is offloading grease waste from a couple of well-known big box stores. But electricity and CNG is only part of the story. What the bacteria can't convert into methane gas gets processed into fertilizer. Fertilizer without phosphorus, a key ingredient of harmful algae blooms. We've been working on for over a year to separate the phosphorus from the liquid stream that allows us to take the phosphorus where we need it and stop putting it on where we don't need it. Along with conservation and restoration programs, farmers now have another tool to combat algae feeding runoff. The cow eats the grain, the manure comes to the digester, the food came from the cow, and now we're going back to digesting it, and the nutrients that went through the cycle already is gonna to return to that cycle again. From fertilizer to food to waste, and back to fertilizer again. All in one perfectly sustainable loop. A possible solution for America's growing need for more energy, fresh water, and food. Next time you go to the grocery store and you get those big, beautiful vegetables or fruits or stuff like that, it may be a product of Quasar. Bio